Welcome, Dean Fiona Caldicott, to the Clinical Informatics Congress here at NHS Digital. And I'm going to ask you a few questions, but I just want to say thank you very much for coming. Dave Fiona, you started your career in general practice, then went to psychiatry, and in the end was a, a leader of the profession through being president of the Royal College of Psychiatry. Now you're the National Data Guardian. How did your clinical experience in general practice and psychiatry help you become the National Data Guardian? I do think that part of our training as doctors and other clinicians too um, emphasises the importance of of confidentiality and the patient's rights. So I think we could argue that it becomes part of our DNA. Yeah. It's really important. And I learned as a young GP and then a psychiatrist that in those sort of relationships where you're relating to the whole person rather than trying to understand the problem with their eye or something more particular, how crucial it is that they have confidence that you will respect the confidentiality of what they tell you. Psychiatry perhaps particularly, where you hear very intimate stories from patients who've maybe never talked to anyone before about the things that they bring to the consultation. So I think in my early years in practice it was absolutely crucial to think about confidentiality and also Part of my practice as a psychiatrist was in therapy, psychotherapy. So working with a group of patients and with individual patients, it really was important to think about what that individual was willing to have disclosed to people other than the therapist. So I think I had a lot of experience early on in this area. And that was linked to interest in how the system is run or what I think of as governance. So from very early days as a practitioner, I got involved in the local hospital committee, the way the system was run, what is important to the people who come to us for care. And I think for me, the, the invitation to work on information governance as I left clinical practice, combined with my awareness of confidentiality and all those issues to make a thread which came through information governance and links to clinical governance, of course. Okay. Linking on to that first question, Dame Fiona, you've now done three major reviews, and uh, I'm, I apologise if this is overly simplistic, but for me the overwhelmingly dominant theme has been public trust. How do you think ordinary clinicians in their, in their roles in the NHS or in social care can sustain or improve public trust? Well, I think for me that links to what I was just saying about confidentiality. From the moment that the patient comes into the consulting room, you're thinking about them as a person. And how are you going to establish a trusting relationship with them? Um, many patients are anxious, uh, even frightened, uh, particularly seeing a psychiatrist perhaps rather than a different sort of doctor. So I think that is part of the process, if you like, of training to do that work and then putting it into practice, clinical practice, as you meet new people. So for me, they're absolutely crucially linked. If the patient doesn't trust the doctor, they are not going to give them the details of what has brought them to the consultation, particularly with very sensitive information. So I, I do think Thinking about trust, how you show that you're trustworthy, is a key part of clinical practice. All clinicians, not just doctors. And that, for me, is the connection between looking after the patient's information, health and care information, but also trying to help them with whatever it is that's brought, the, brought them to you. If I may, I'm just going to loop back to you the answer to your first question, where you brought up the subject of clinical governance and information governance. Um, I know we've chatted informally about this but in the past, but I'd, I'd be really grateful for your take on what do you think the relationship is between clinical governance and information governance? So it's interesting looking back on the timing. The first report that I... Um, did, convened a group to prepare. That work started in 1996 
and was about concern that the profession had that with increasing use of computers, information needed to be encrypted so that it couldn't be lost or spoilt or uh, disclosed. And that work went on until 1997 when the report was published. So it was a separate piece of work and it was about confidentiality in relation to issues such as um, prescriptions being paid for at the centre with patients' name and addresses and the drugs disclosed on them. And that was one of the examples that we thought was not, not right. In 1998, the guidance about clinical governance came into force. And it's very interesting looking back to think, because I was then a full-time clinician, how was it that the profession became convinced that that preoccupation with the quality of care and how we continually try to improve the quality of care we're offering patients became so much part of how we think about what we're doing, whereas information governance, which had begun to be thought about at about the same time, Caldicott Guardians, I think, were established in 97, 98, didn't have the same meaning for the clinicians. And I have said, and you will have heard me say this on many occasions, that if only information governance had been connected back then with clinical governance, I think clinicians would not have had the difficulties, the resistance, if you like, or the lack of interest that they've had in information governance, which has tended to be something that has been as separate, the uh, domain of people with technical knowledge, technology expertise, and not so much involving clinicians, but actually if you think about the patient and the fact that they've given the information to the clinician, it's as much part of clinical work, and I would argue actually more so than the great help we get from the technical experts on how we use the data and safeguard it and so on. Let's get right bang up to date. Your last review is really in, in, in the modern era looking at digital transformation and new digital technologies. I know the prediction is difficult, but looking forward, what do you see as the major challenges with digital technologies for the clinician in the future? So I think there are challenges which are different for different generations. It's very interesting looking at the introduction of the electronic patient record that some of my generation find it much harder to adapt to recording information with that sort of system than paper records. And so training, I think, has to be modified according to whether you're talking to a group of senior doctors who don't necessarily want to reveal to their juniors that they're not so comfortable with this approach, um, as with the younger generations who, of course, have grown up using technology increasingly. I think the greatest challenge, really, is, is that adaptation. How do we keep pace with what our patients and the public are doing? So, in a way, it's the problem we had back in 96, but, but speed it up because the rate of change is much greater. And also I think attitudes to clinicians have changed. So they're no longer accepting what we say as what they want to hear all the time. Many patients come to a doctor or another clinician with a lot of information they've obtained from the web. They've used their smartphones to obtain information about their condition or their family's condition. And I think that's quite new for many doctors, but it's increasing. So it's about how we help people get the training they need through their continuing professional development. Hopefully, the audience today in the Clinical Informatics Congress will be as inspired as I was when I first heard you speak. So what advice would you give the, any clinician in the audience who wants to progress his or her career in the direction towards information governance? I think there is a certain amount of training available. I mean, everybody working in the health service and in social care is encouraged to do the minimal training in information governance through the IG toolkit, which as we speak is being improved to be more appropriate to the current pressures and challenges in the service. So I think that once people have done that, 
I would hope that the organisation that they work in then provides further opportunity uh, to do training, to maybe have discussions with the Caldicott Guardian and those people looking after the organisation's information system, just to understand a bit more at the next level, if you like, of knowledge. And that will interest some people to take it further. I mean, we have a fantastic group of Caldicott Guardians up and down the country who've become really expert in some of the tricky issues that come up in terms of when to share data, when not to share it, and what, what the parameters of that are. So I think there are people in the system, maybe the practice lead in primary care, who do know a lot. And I would encourage some continuing education, if you like, with those people locally who are expert. So thank you very much indeed for inviting me. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, but it's great to have an opportunity to talk to such an interested audience.